first person I'm going to recognize is Representative Dunbar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and welcome, Secretary. Um, I, I know this is the fifth time in six years we're going to have this conversation. In years past, I called it Groundhog Day because we were always talking about the same thing, combined reporting, and unfortunately, we're going to go there again. Uh, but this year, it's not so much Groundhog Day because it's a little bit different. Uh, every other year's projection for the first fiscal for the first year for that first budget year has had either a negative revenue effect or no revenue effect. This year, it seems that the governor is proposing additional revenue from combined reporting proposal of $238.8 million, which is the exact same proposal as last year, where it was minus $7.2 million. And I guess when I look at it, it was very confusing to me, and it's like, what what's changed? What is different? Why is the proposal different? Or are we just trying to balance the budget uh, with a plug number? And I'm going to ask uh, Amy Gill to respond to that question. Yes, thank you. The um, difference this year is that we had actual return data from tax year 18 of how corporations responded to the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. If you'll remember, that federal act broadened the base and lowered the rate at the federal level. At the state level, the effect was a broader base. So when we looked at the 2018 estimated payments, corporations that were anticipating an increase in tax actually did pay more in March and June than we had previously thought would happen. The prior proposal assumed that corporations would react first to the rate cut, and that is why you actually saw decreased revenue in the first two months. After seeing actual federal return data and how PA corporations reacted to that, we made the assumption that companies that knew their taxes would increase due to combined reporting would begin to increase their estimated payments in March and June of that year. So this is an assumption we didn't make in 15, 16, we didn't make it in 17, 18, we didn't make it in 18, 19, we didn't make it in 19, 20, and we're gonna make the assumption that corporations are gonna remit dollars, uh, estimated tax payments to safe harbor themselves. Is that what you're saying? And that, I think a fair way to characterize that is that the department now has access to uh, new, better data about actual behavior of corporations. Um, the uh, previous estimates uh, may have been a little too cautious in, in terms of how the cash would arrive uh, under the new system. Um, but now with better information, we're able to make that change. And, and I, would, I would suggest, have we looked at House Bill 1445, which is Representative Daley's bill, which is the combined reporting legislation that is out there? I would assume that would be your vehicle. And are you aware that on page 18 of that bill, it exempts corporations from making safe harbor payments? No, I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, I, and and, and I, I'm not to step on Representative Daly's toes, and, and I do have a great deal of respect, but it is very specific that in, in that bill on page 18 that it, it says that corporations that have to make estimated payments don't have to make them until the fourth quarter of, of, of the year, of the tax year. So again, we would net zero based upon House Bill 1445. Well, we should look at that language. Um. And, I, and I would urge urge that to happen. And, and, and I'm not really sure, Amy, uh, how what what how what percentage of returns did you actually see to 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 judge that all corporations would start safe harbor make safe harbor payments because I know it can't be everyone. No, it wasn't everybody. We looked at the actual 2018 estimated payments that came in through calendar year 18, and then synced it up with the returns that were filed in either May or November of 2019. I I can get you the percentage. I don't. Know I, I would hand. appreciate that. Um, even if only a small percentage of corporations reacted, if the large companies send in earlier estimated, send in the estimated payments to avoid having one large payment due at the end of their year, it, it would make a difference in the numbers, and that's what we saw with the return data. And, and over the years, we've had discussions about various numbers, uh, how different proposals are out, uh, different estimates have been out there for what type of revenue would be generated by this. Uh, the one... One that I always bring up, and, and since we'll be talking with them this afternoon, is the IFO. The IFO has always always stated that it's between eight to twelve percent of of corporate net income taxes the expected return. Have you, and which is far less than what you're projecting? Have you had any discussions with the IFO about this revenue estimate? The, the department has um, 
discussed those estimates uh, with the IFO on multiple occasions. And uh, the short answer is that uh, the IFO, frankly, and this is not a criticism, but the way the system works is that they do not have access to actual tax return data, and we do. Um, the, the estimates that we have uh, used in this situation have been drawn from a model that combines actual returns from a combined reporting state matched to actual returns filed in Pennsylvania to see what the difference in the tax rate is, uh, excuse me, the difference in the tax base. Um, and, and with all due respect to them, uh, they don't have access to that data. So um, the, the model that is used to estimate the change in the tax base has not changed. And, and the only thing that you're seeing that's different now is assumptions about how uh, how uh, cash receipts in the initial periods would would be affected. And and I, and I appreciate your answers, and I know we are out of time. Uh, and but I did want to caution that I, I understand these are estimates. I understand these are estimates. And, and I came from construction where our whole life was based upon estimates, and we realized if we screw up one estimate, we could be pushing ourselves off a fiscal cliff. I urge you to double check, triple check, quadruple check that we're balancing our budget upon this assumption and it's a huge number. So I would really appreciate to, to, to see the numbers that you have that you came to that conclusion. So we don't fall off a fiscal cliff ourselves. Thank you.